We are back with another one, Hebrews in Exile, episode number 59, with our honorable teacher, Robert B. Holman Jr. and Sean Appleton. And one of the things that we try to do in this podcast often is explain to the Hebrews in Exile how opulent you are. You are worthy of kingship and you are a part of a holy lineage of people that the Most High has set apart. So in this podcast, we're going to try to edify you. We're going to give you adoration so you can continue to strive to be opulent in the eyes of the Most High and not try to be this bereft people that is lacking kingship. Hebrews in exile, you know what we do. Let's, you know what we do. Come on, come on. Let's go! This is Rabbi Robert B. Holman Jr. and... Sean Appleton. And this is Hebrews Hebrews in Exile. What's up? I like the way we just sync up Hmm? with that. That's cold-blooded. What? Hebrews in In, Exile. Yes, 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 yes. That commands a lot. You got to understand what that means. Yes, 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 you do. We are exiled and we are, our plight is... The return, but of you know, people. but but you know what, you know what, you know what, you know what. I I want to start. I want to start. I'm going to start tonight in Devarim, Deuteronomy, chapter seven, mm. verses six through nine. I want I want to read that. Okay, and the reason why I want to I want to read this is because. We, as Hebrews in exile all over the world, and I've said this before, we are, and I I have to, I want to impress upon your mind how great, how privileged we are, even in spite of what it looks like. True. Oh, my gosh, yes. I, I want us... I want us to understand how great we are in spite of what it looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the Most High has spoken to us through his prophet, Mashe, these words. For you are a people set apart as holy for Yahweh Eloheka. You are a people. We are a people that have been set apart as holy. Not based upon the white hat, white dress, the long sleeves. Yeah, the long skirts and, and all that. And, and the look and, and and trying to look trying to look holy. No, the Most High says that has absolutely zero to do with it. Mm -hmm. You are a people, Hebrew Israel, you are a people set apart as holy for Yahweh Eloheka. Mm -hmm. Yahweh Eloheka has chosen you. You are chosen Mm -hmm. out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his own unique treasure. Listen to, Mm -hmm. listen to this. That doesn't sound like, that doesn't sound like a people who are begging. Nope. That doesn't sound like a people who are bereft of anything. Yeah, like the rift of opulence or any type our of... Our king, yeah. our king, our Elohim, our Elohim, the mm-hmm. Elohim of Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov said, you are a people set apart as holy for Yahweh. Yahweh has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his own unique treasure. Mm. It's heavy. No, no, no. You're not getting it. See, we are his treasure. Mm -hmm. What do you do with the treasure? 
It, uh, well, I don't want to use a word that I don't want to use, which is you covet that treasure. You cherish that treasure. You, you, you nurture that treasure. That's something that you hold near and dear to your heart. That's, that's, that, that's almost kind of your treasure kind of defines you a little bit in a, in, in a, in a roundabout way. But it's, it's something that's very, it's very coveted. Do you protect a treasure? Sure you do. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. You, what? Yeah. What do you do with the treasure? When you get the image of a treasure in your mind, you see these these pirates that open up this treasure box that has a big old lock on it. You protect yeah. it. Yeah. You build a fence yeah. around it. Yeah. You know, when you, as you were saying that, you know what? There was a movie that came to mind. Have you seen uh, Eddie Murphy's new Coming to America? Yeah. Too? Yep, 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 yep. In that movie, there was an individual that's in, he has this begotten son, if you will. Yeah. And he bestows upon him this image of, or at least tells him, do you realize that you are the heir to the throne? And he's having a difficult time trying to transition into that mindset of opulence and how to function in a kingdom and how to actually be a, a, a good leader to a people and he has to prove himself in order to, to be able to be worthy of that, of that moniker of being called a prince. And that's almost, I see that parallel with, with Israel as you're reading that. We're trying to tell Hebrews in exile, your kingship. Yes. Your, your royalty. Your royalty. Shows that you, 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 <laughs> you are handpicked by the most high out of all the peoples on the face of this earth. Mm -hmm. So why is it that we're acting like second class citizens? Why are we, <sighs> why are we begging for, for acceptance and recognition? Right. Your royalty. Right. Yahweh did his, set his heart on us or choose us because we numbered more than any other people. On the contrary, we were the fewest of all peoples. Mm. Rather, you got to get this. You're chosen out of all the peoples of the world. Rather, it was because Yahweh loved you. Mm -hmm. and because he wanted to keep the oath which he swore to our ancestors, Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. No, no, no. I, 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 want, I, want, I, want, you to, I want you to feel this. Mm -hmm. I want you to feel this. Let's take it. Point one. Point one. Been set apart as holy for Yahweh, been chosen out of all the peoples of the or of the world, you are. We are not the largest number of people, but we're the fewest. But rather, it is because Yahweh loved us very much, and so. wanted to keep His oath and covenant that He made with our ancestors. That Yahweh brought you out with, the, brought us out, our ancestors My. out with a strong hand and redeemed you from a life of slavery under the hand of Pharaoh. I've talked about this before, okay? Mm -hmm. We were never, ever, ever supposed to be enslaved again. We were never supposed to be enslaved again. <laughs> and slavery became our plight because our ancestors refused to accept the Most High as being their king, their redeemer, their savior, and refused to live by the orders of that he had placed before us to live by. Right. <laughs> From this, you can know that Yahweh Eloheka is indeed Yahweh, 
Elohim, the faithful El who keeps his covenant and extends grace. Mm -hmm. He extends grace. So the narrative that Jesus Christ brought, I got to quit talking. (laughs) No, I mean, because that's where a lot of our people are underneath that the greatest number of our people are trapped underneath uh, uh, an a doctrine, and ideology that, that he is, is contrary. He brought grace and truth. No, listen to listen to our Hebraic narrative True. out of the mouth of the Most High to the prophet Mashe as Mashe begins to repeat what the Most High is saying to him. He brought us out of slavery and redeemed us. From this you can know that Yahweh Eloheka is indeed Elohim, the faithful L who keeps covenant and extends grace to those who love him. Watch this now and observe his mitzvot to a thousand generations. That's scripture. I'm just reading. That's, 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 that's who we are. So when I, when I talk about us being, the greatest people on the face of the earth. I'm not just flapping my jaws. I'm speaking it from the face, from from the mouth of the one who has made me. True. And the one who keeps me. Mm -hmm. And what better validation to have? So, so I get a little disturbed when somebody wants to come up and start talking about and calling the one who said to me, I chose you. I set you apart. You're my own unique treasure. And I want you to observe my mitzvot. And I'm extending grace and mercy to those who love me and observe them to a thousand generations. What's a thousand generations? A lot of times, a lot of people. So now, here comes some, I can't, I can't, I don't, I don't want to talk like that. I don't talk like that. What's the diplomatic approach? What we got? Now somebody wants to stand in the pulpit and lead our people astray and tell them that what I just read to you here, that the Most High through Masha is asking Hebrew Israel to do is incorrect. Right. We are, as a people, putting people in leadership and validating them saying this is the narrative that we want to hear. You know what? I have been I have been refraining from <laughs> I have been refraining from running people under the bus because it's just <laughs> it just it's just <sighs> We're speaking in generalities. I mean, we got to be specific at some time. Hey, let's let's P- pull it out. People like listen. They got to be able listen, to point to an example. Listen, 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 listen. Question. Okay, now. All right. Let's 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 set the stage for this. Okay, listen. If we were living in the times of our ancestors, and and uh, somebody popped up within the <sighs> narrative within the within the congregation or outside the congregation of Israel and uh, started teaching something that was opposed to Mo- to Mashe. Uh-huh. When we crucify him? Well, <laughs> let's put it this way. Let, let's... Yeah. Because that's exactly what was happening across the street. Let's, 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 let's you know what? Let's talk about Korach. Korak. Okay, we're going to stay on our side of the street. Okay, let's, let's, let's do that. Let's talk about Korak, okay? 
And and for those of you who don't know, you have to go into the scripture and you have to look up Korak because we're going to talk about Korak and I'm probably not going to give you any scripture or reference unless Sean points me to the direction because I forget where Korak is. I just know he's in our he's in our text. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, he's Korak Shemot somewhere. was Think. one of the Levites amongst Mashe's leadership team uh, who decided that he was going to start his own ministry. Right. He challenged the authority of, of Moshe. And he challenged Moshe to determine who made you the <laughs> king over us and we're blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah, let's, let's find out. Okay. Let's find out. Let's okay. find out. Let's find out. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to find that. I have to go grab my device. Oh, you, well, you don't have your device. I don't you have know? my device. I gotta go get it. Come on, man. To be you, continue. How you gonna come to the table without your device? I know. I know. I know. I know. I'm, I'm bad tonight. How you, I'm, wait, 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 so wait, wait. How wait, you gonna wait, come wait. to school how, without your pencil? How, wait, 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 wait. We, we never go to church without our Bible. <laughs> now you gonna go to church without your Bible? <laughs> Y'all was gonna church. Y'all always take your Bible with come you. Come to the come to the war with no sword. Go, go get go. So, so, so you, you, you are a. Uh, you are ripe to be shot down because you 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 got no weapon. No, it's all. I'm coming to a gunfight with a knife. It's all stored. It's all stored in, in, in the mind. Yeah. Uh, get 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 Korak. Let's for see me. where we are. Because, okay. Listen, uh, 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 ah, Korak and his people decided to challenge the authority of Marche. Now, this is kind of like. What's going on in our world today? You have a person in the congregation who decides to challenge the authority of the leadership of the congregation and uh, has uh, a side of people that side with him and they're going to go off and they're going to start their own uh, church. Okay. This, is, this is Korak. I think we're in Bid Bad Midbar, which is uh, number sixteen. Okay, let me let me just verify that real quick. So, and, I, and the reason I'm asking because I want to give I want to give you all uh, 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 a scriptorial reference to what I'm talking about. Korak challenged Mashe. Mashe called the whole assembly together at the behest. Of the Most High. No, 16. What is it? It's Bad Mibar or Numbers? Numbers 16. 16. And it's that whole entire chapter. Yeah, you if you go, if you go read Numbers, Numbers 16, you'll you'll find you'll find this individual named Korak. And Korak acts just like a lot of people that are in churches that get upset with the leadership and want to go off and start their own their own thing. That's what Korak tried to do with Mashe. And uh the Most High called a general assembly mm. and through Mashe and had them to bring their fire pans out and 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 to demonstrate. And the Most High and, and Mashe said to Korak, we're going to see, we're going to see who the Most High has chosen. Uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, who's chosen to be the leadership of this great nation, Israel. That's right. That's down and where you're referring to is in verse 18. Read it. It says, read. read. Oh, that's what it is. Read. 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 <laughs> I don't know. I think I want to back up a little bit further than that. Wow. Let, well, let's start at 18. It says, well, where you were starting, which is each man took his fire pan and put fire in it and laid incense on it and stood at the entrance of the tent of meeting with Moshe and Aharon. Korach assembled all the group who were against them at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Then the glory of Yahweh appeared to the whole assembly. Yahweh said to Moshe and Aharon, separate yourselves from the assembly. I'm going to destroy them right now. Now, 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 you, now, you see, when we start challenging, now watch this, there's a difference between challenging leadership but there's a difference between challenging leadership that's orchestrated and put in position by the most high mm -hmm. and every leader of a congregation has not been put in position 
by the authority of the Most High. You've either had a trial and error minister come through so you could pick the one that you want or you want to pick and that kind of thing going on, or you have somebody like Korak who's decided we're going to start our own our own ministry. Right, and that's in verse 8 where that whole narrative takes place on why he's doing what he's doing. Read it. It says, then, then Moshe said to Korak, I'm backing up to uh, Badmi Bar 16, verse 8. It says, Moshe said to Korak, listen here, you sons of Levi. Now, we all know the sons of Levi have a specific position. That's what you were talking about. It is for you a mere trifle that Yahweh of the, or the Elohim of Israel has separated you from the community of Israel to bring you close to himself so that you can do the work in the tabernacle of the Most High and stand before the community serving them. He has brought you close and all your brothers and sons of Levi with you. Now you want the office of Kohanim There you go. Too? There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. There that you is go. why you and your group have gathered together against the Most High there after you there all. You, there you go. What is Aharon that you can complain against him? There you go. There you go. So Korak wanted to start his own church. <laughs> yep. Now you want to preside over this group now. You you want to take over. Okay. So, um, the Most High demonstrated the authority of who was in charge. Mm -hmm. Korak and all his group came before the assembly of Israel before Mashe. Mashe told the whole assembly of Israel, you need to back up. Just back up. Because the Most High said he was going to destroy these people. Uh, the text goes on to say that the Most High opened up the ground and swallowed them all alive and closed it up as if they never existed. Women, children, the dog, the tent, everything. Everybody that sided with Korat. And you know what's, here's the interesting part about that narrative, is what happens the day after. Because if you think 250 folk was a lot, Let's talk about the thousands. I think it was like 14,000 somewhere in there of people that were complaining about what had happened what had the happened. day before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the Most yeah. High dealt with them too. Dealt with them too. Oh, he shouldn't have did them like that. I don't think, we. what kind of leadership is this? Is where you going, all he was trying to do it. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. That's what it's going to be? Well, all of y'all can go too. Yeah. So, what, did he, what did he hit him with, a plague? Hold on. Start off for me. I'm a, I'm gonna get it. Well, so you we know, gotta get it for the folks. I mean, and, and you know, the one other reason why I'm 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 going here with this is because I'm trying to set the foundation for 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 talking about something that is very, very um uh systemic to Hebrews in Israel and our our congregations that are being led awry by theology that is completely not our theology. I, I talked about I talked about once before the fact that um, we have leaders and leadership that um, are predominantly unlearned men, mm -hmm. and uh, they um, are simply regurgitate the kinds of things that they have heard growing up as a child. And in the churches where they have resided, now they're like Korak. Some of them are like Korak, and some of them, some of them have been, um, you know, um, helped by their own pastors to start ministries under their under the pastor. So I mean, he has now he has churches under him, but they all foster the same theological premise, which is which is error. And I want right. and I, I want to get I want to get to the there. Read, you find it? Yes, I did. It's actually in the very next uh, chapter, chapter seventeen of uh, Bad Minbar, which is Numbers. And actually, the portion that I'm referring to actually starts in six. I'll read a little bit of six and seven, and then the actual number that died in the plague that you're referring to was actually fourteen thousand seven hundred that died in the plague. And so it was a plague. It was a plague. It said, yeah. but the very next day, the whole community of the people of Israel complained against Moshe and Aharon. You have killed Yahweh's people. However, 
as a community was assembling against Moshe and Haron. They looked in the direction of the tent of meeting and saw a cloud cover it and the glory of the Most High appeared. Moshe and Aharon came to the front of the tent of meeting. And it goes on to say, you know, this is the reason, you know, the incense was in the fire pans again. And, and then the 14,700 died in the plague because they ran their mouth. One of the things, one of the things that we're bereft of in this exile is having the kind of reverence and esteem for the most high. We are bereft of the fear. Oh yeah. Of what the most high can do and will do when he is upset. True. And we're not really sure when things happen to us, we're not really sure why, because we forget and we're not cognizant of the fact that even though that we're in exile, the Most High is still holding us accountable for our actions. Absolutely. And if our actions are opposed to him and what he has directed for us through his Torah and his mitzvot, he will come back and he will execute judgment mm -hmm. against us. So a lot of times we don't understand why certain things happen to us, but they happen to us because of our ignorance, for one, mm -hmm. and because we won't, we won't, we won't study and we won't turn back to the most high. I think and we, the most high yeah. said something. He said that in this exile, he says, I'm not going to utterly destroy you, but a lot of you are going to die. Yeah. I mean, what you're saying is quintessential because what I'm recognizing here as you're speaking is the fact that there's a mind shift between the Hebrew mind and the mind that's Greek, been Greeked. Yes. Uh, in the, in the sense of look at the narrative that you're proposing is that, if we have a Greek mind, if we're over there in the New Testament, there's this idea that we are the, the currency that's in play. Let me explain it this way. It's my belief. My belief in God, so to speak. And it's the, it's the idea that God does stuff for me. Meaning, as long as I have a belief and that's all you need out of me is my belief. Well, well, I believe in you. Yeah, I mean, and, and the thing about it is, is that we're always in a state of need. Of, we're, we're needy. We're needy. And right. We're needy, and we shouldn't have to be needy, but we're needy because of what our ancestors did, which I read to you or spoke about the last time in Lamentations chapter 5, I think, verse number 7, or chapter 7, verse 5. Mm -hmm. We're in this situation because of what our ancestors have done. The reason why I'm, 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 I'm bringing this is because, Sean, we need to talk about who keeps feeding us, our people, this propaganda mm -hmm. that the law of Mashe has been done away with. You shouldn't follow it. It's death. Right. And it's all about what it's all about you and I doing something. We have to, you have to do something. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you got to do something. You got to obey. Right. He's not asking you to do any, he's not asking you to do anything but obey. Absolutely. It is, it is a lifestyle that we've been mandated to have. If we're going to be a part of this particular kingdom. That's why I've always continued to say that's so, where that mentality comes so in. I'm going to go there. So we're talking about pastors, by I, the way. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. If we were in the land, and as I, as I, as I just showed you, Korak got brought to the fore and he got dealt with. Yeah. Hmm. Leaders or people who want to assert the authority. Now watch this. It's not, Korak didn't get jacked up because he was usurping or trying to usurp the authority of Mashe, he was trying to ex usurp the authority of the Most High because Mashe was the Most High's man. He mm -hmm. called him, he appointed him. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to usurp the authority of the Most High. So now, 
when you teach lessons. Yeah, that dim- that diminish. That diminish the authority of the most high. Uh, there are there are repercussions that are going to befall you. Mm-hmm. And the problem is you won't even know why things are happening to you the way they are. Mm. But one of the word of faith ministers uh, has a, a teaching out on YouTube that is very disturbing to Hebrew people. And he entitles that, that sermon um, that talks about the law being, you shouldn't follow it. It's, it's death to you. Yeah, it is. It is death. Um, my mama told me, boy, if you don't do what I told you to do, and if you don't obey, I'm going to skin you alive. Well, that was death to me. Here's another example. Go out here and commit a crime against a serious punishable crime that in the United States is classified as the punishment is capital punishment. Yeah. Is that not death? Yeah. So how do we have the audacity or the creative privilege just to dismiss yeah. the so, most high? So you're you're more in tune with this because I, I can't listen to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Help me out. I mean, help well, me out. The, the narrative is 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 more of this, you know, again, this ideology that says, you know, um, it it's all about faith and not about works. They keep talking about works, 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 and how your salvation is built on works. We're not establishing salvation through, I don't even know where in there it talks about if you do these, you will be saved. No, no. And there's 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 <laughs> nothing there's nothing in the Hebrew text from Bereshit to Second Chronicles. There's nothing in there that says that your obedience to these mitzvot is going to save you. Right. Right. It's kind of a a, a, a unwritten rule for lack of eloquence to know that you have a series of atonements that you can make because you know that you're going to end up messing up. It's not about keeping the, well, the best to your ability. There should be an effort made to keep those things holy because we are people that are set apart. There's a, there's a parish hall, or I shouldn't say a parish hall, but a portion of scripture that talks about the Kedoshim. And that Kedoshim defines for us those things that make us set apart and holy. And we try our best to do as such. But we also have atonements for things. And there's some things that the Most High, just like if you were a child living in your parents' house, they're not going to tolerate. Just like you live in the United States. There are things that the United States government is not going to tolerate from its citizens. So the idea that to kind it's, it's kind of weird to sit there and, and make a whole entire people believe that you know what? Again, look at the narrative. Where in society do we ever have a situation where you can commit an egregious act or commit an offense against someone and then have someone else pay for it? If I go out and jack your car up or I steal something from you or I murder somebody or I uh, or a person commits rape, there is an atonement that has to be paid for. For those acts, whether it be incarceration or even the death penalty. So it's just, it's, it's astounding upon which how we get to this point where we go to Sunday mornings all the time and we have our trusted leaders put us in a reality that doesn't exist. Nowhere in the world does that work except on Sunday morning. You can do whatever you want. And as long as you can come here and confess, Catholicism, I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to call them out. If you confess it, it can go away. If you confess, and and, and Christianity, which is a form of, obviously is under the umbrella of Catholicism, 
You have it with all the all the folks that go to church on Sunday, the 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 the, the Baptist, the uh, name them, and you can enumerate them all. Pray to this person, and all your sins will be expunged. Listen, where does that work in the world? Listen, nowhere. Listen, listen, listen to what the Most High says here in Vaikra, chapter eighteen. We're going to read. Start reading at verse number one. Mm -hmm. Leviticus chapter 18, verse one. Yahweh said to Mashe. Now the Most High is speaking to Mashe and telling him, speak to the people of Israel and tell them, I am Yahweh, your Eloheka or your Elohim. You are not to engage in the activities found in the land of Egypt. So, we are in, in Egypt. Egypt was the known world at that time when Israel lived there and everybody came to Egypt. It's kind of like America. Kind of like the United States, superpower of the, of the times. Where you used to live. Well, we still live in this, in this American Egypt. Mm -hmm. You are not to engage in the activities found in the land of Canaan. Canaan. So Canaan was another, was the place where he was going to take, take them to, mm -hmm. okay? Where I'm bringing you, nor are you to live by their laws. So now we are in this exile. There are norms within this exile or laws within this exile that we live by, but there are also norms within this exile that are not laws and ways of life that we are not supposed to adhere to or take up mm -hmm. as part of our way of life. Now listen to what he says. You are to obey my rulings and laws and live accordingly, for I am Yahweh, your Elohim. Mm -hmm. You are to observe my laws and rulings, if a person does them, he will have life through them. If a person does them, he will have life through them. So I don't know where it is that our gentleman from the Word of Faith ministry comes up with the idea that these laws and rulings are death. The yeah. Most High says they, you will have life through them. Mm hmm. Yeah. And that's my concern. My concern is that the these these pastors are twisting the most high's words to make the most high sound like he's an ogre. Yeah, which is which is totally false. He's not an ogre. I just read to you. I just I just opened this podcast by saying you are chosen. You are holy. You are set apart, and, and and why? Because out of all the people on the face of the earth, the Most High loves you. Mm -hmm. If the Most High loves you, why would he give you something that's designed to destroy you? Right, right, right. If you, uh, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, I am going to say it. If you go to YouTube and look for Creflo Dollar's video sermon on the teachings of the law, law he's yep. going to tell you that obeying the law is death yeah. and that you shouldn't do it. Yeah, it's totally I'm wrong. reading scripture right here. The Most High says if a person does them, he will have life through them. And, and then the Most High signs that. Yes, yes. <clears throat> he's not afraid. He signs it. I am Yahweh. Right. I'm the one that's speaking. And right. this is not the only place in our text where the Most High declares for us that by obeying his laws and his rulings, that we will have life through them. This is not the only place that, 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 that he says that. He says it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask the question, who's true? The Most High who created all things or Creflo Dollar who says by obeying the Most High, you're going to die. And it's, it's, it's all about works. It's not about works. Right. <clears throat> it's not about works. Yeah. It's about obedience to our heavenly father. And it's interesting. 
what's interesting to me is we all claim to have the same father. Mm -hmm. We all claim to have the same Elohim of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Mm -hmm. But our understanding of our father's rules are completely different. For one quintessential reason. I'm going to... We, 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 we all well, I'm gonna get this, into it. We all claim to serve the same Elohim, but our saving serving of the same Elohim is always it's different. Well, I didn't hear it that way. I didn't hear it that way. Well, I didn't hear him say, Well, come on, come on. It's so simple that even a child I can't hear in it. But look, well, look what did well, you just say? I didn't hear that. And you were leaving it up to interpretation to make it feel comfortable for you. That is why I will always say that Christianity is important for the United States because it mimics the United States government. I keep coming back to this issue. United States government or the United States where we live, you may live in a different part of the world, but I'm going to talk about where we are right now. It is, is a republic. That means that the people, the people tell the government what they want. We have the ability to amend our laws. That is why it is so easy for Christians to say, you know what? I can do whatever I want to do. I don't like this teaching over here because it's pinning me down to something that's not comfortable for me. So let's go start something else over here and change it so I can make it comfortable for me. That's not how this works because you're used to a democracy. You're not used to a theocracy or a monarch that says, you know what? I do not care what you think you will get x nade out of here if you violate my laws i'm not taking a a, a, a a democratic vote to see whether or not you know we're gonna have you know this person be the leader no i'm appointing all this so when you grow up in a society like united states that says it's like burger king you can have it your way all the time your way that it never will work. That's why a lot of our people are saying, you know, it's hard to acquiesce to this he break thing because and 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 doing the mosaic law because you're dictating to me my lifestyle. I don't dick get my life dictated to me. I dictate to God what he does. And that's their mentality. And that's the sad part. And that's I know we don't use that term, but I'm using it in the vernacular that they use it. I tell God what to do. He doesn't tell me what to do. And the moment he tells me something I don't like, then that's when I'm going to cease to believe in him. That's why you got these people out here talking about, well, oh, I got, you know, this and I got that. And how come God lets all this stuff happen? And I don't, I just don't believe in him no more because you can't tell him what to do. That's the problem that we got here in this country, in my opinion. And we got a bunch of people, the sheeple are telling all the big wigs, I'm going to name them. You got the Dollars, you got the Jakes, you got the Osteens, you got the Copelands, you got all these people, you got the Heggies, you got all these people that are out there. The moment that the, there is a paradigm shift within the people, those leaders are shift too because those people are just, the leaders are just going to go feed off of what they want. And if they want a, a, a doctrine, if they want to eat cookies and sugar all the time, instead of eating the sincere milk of what's being fed to them from the most high, then this is what these weak people are going to give them. Well, why don't you just go ahead and preach? Because you know what? I'm, 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 I'm sick and tired of our people being under, under leadership that's weak. You can sit there and say all day long and preach a, a gospel, woman thou art loose, and empower people all day long. That's great. But if we get back to what you have eloquently put open my eyes to, which is it is about a community of people coming back together, following the most highest way of life, so we can be prosperous in a land that we own that we can't even fathom as a nation of people. Can you even imagine as let me just say, as melanated folk, having your own country where the most high is with you all day long, we can't even fathom that because we don't live in a society that promotes that kind of doctrine. And then the egregious part about it is we've got pastors that are sitting in pulpits putting us, you know, not actually elevating us to a point where we can believe yeah. in something like that. <clears throat> 
I, I, have I, to, I, I retort. I, knew, our, I got elevated. Our job, our job is to raise the spiritual consciousness of our people mm. to help them to understand how great they are, how, 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 how amongst, as I open, as I open tonight in, in Diva Reem, I mean, what more can I say? Mm. We, we, we are not, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be in a state of begging, but we are because of this kind of narrative that we continue to hear mm. that tells people that what the Most High said is irrelevant. Right. Right. And he's been, and the most highest word has been replaced by somebody who puts their pants on just the way you do and bleeds blood. Right. And died. And died. Our Elohim didn't die. Nope. Nope. And he didn't have a baby. Right. Didn't impregnate some woman neither. See? And, <laughs> and, 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 and my problem is, my problem is, this is what Hebrews and exile is all about. If you don't know the difference, between that which is holy and profane, you will continue to walk in the profaneness of what you're walking in, and your end will be destruction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're saved. Saved from what? Yeah, from what? Yeah. Saved from what? Hell? <laughs> Good. You go with that. Right, right, right. You go with that. <laughs> I'm not... <sighs> I'm not... I am delivered from a consciousness that is always focused on something that's negative. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. consciousness now, because I have embraced the same thing that Father Abraham taught, I've embraced the same thing that Moses taught. I embrace the same thing that Joshua taught. I've embraced the same thing that the prophets taught. I've embraced that which has removed me from a sin consciousness and a negative consciousness. And I live in a positive view looking forward right. to something that has, that has, that, that, that's relative. Right, right. And Absolutely. I'm not listening, I'm not listening to people tell me that the God that create, I'm going to use it, the God that created me is a liar. I'm not going to listen to that. Mm -hmm. My spirit can't take it. Greed. My Greed. spirit can't take you telling me that. Mashe was the greatest prophet. The Most High said he was the greatest prophet that I speak to him face to face. I don't speak to him. I speak to him face to face. And I spoke to him and I told him what to tell Hebrew Israel. And now you're going to come around and tell the people that what I told Mashe, you don't have to do anymore, that I lied. Right. My spirit can't take it. Right. And they didn't have the nerve to quote, he's the same as yesterday, as he is today, and forevermore. My spirit well, can't take it. Uh, I, 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 guess, I mean, are you hearing me? Right. Are you hearing? Are you hearing? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Shaul, Paul said, we are not under the law. We are under grace. That was a absolute true statement. You gotta, gotta understand Paul saying, we're not under the perversion of the Torah. We're under grace because Torah was given to us as a matter of grace. We've already told us we weren't the greatest nation. Mm -hmm. We were the smallest of all the nations. Mm -hmm. And he chose us and he loved. If he chose a nation of people like us, that's grace, man. Right, right, right. See that now, yeah. now, 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 let's talk about perversion. If you really want to know what perversion is? That message that that man taught that's on YouTube, that's perversion. Mm. That is perverting 
what is what we just keep telling you and reading out of scripture, the most I said, it'll make you wise. The most I said, it, it's true. The most I said, it's perfect. The most I said, it'll give you life. The most I said, it's, 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 it's more precious than silver and gold. The most I said, it'll make, it'll, 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 it'll give you wisdom and understanding. And then you're going to come around and tell me that it's death to you and you're not supposed to do what the most high said you're supposed to do and you're going to call the most high politically a liar i'm sorry hell no right i mean you you, you there's another dynamic that that's there no. that, that you talked about no that you said hey listen you know what and you uh, listen and and you go oh, you're and wrong you, and you go to you go to church every sunday and you listen to somebody tell you that the god that you love is a liar and I ain't talking about Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the Most High. That's correct. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. That's correct. I'm talking about the uh, absolute all existence. I'm talking about the omniscient one. I'm talking about the 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 the, the awesome one. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the mighty. You're going to tell me that that one is a liar, and what he has given to us in our in our history is not to be followed. And you're going to no. Come on. I'm I'm a, I'm no. I'm up. I'm upset tonight. Yeah, I mean it's it's I'm, I'm you're beside I'm the, yourself now. I'm beside myself. I <laughs> didn't I didn't mean to go there, but you know what? I'm just gonna sit back in my chair. I'm let you finish this. <laughs> I mean, because you know, really, it, it, the, another part that that that's really quintessential to this is the understanding that these these people aren't even giving the correct narrative contextually on how things are be, going to be presented. That is a big big issue too, because number one. Um, you're, you're teaching it from a standpoint that let's just do away with it, but let's not even understand it, first off. Let, let's put it in its proper context. And number two, let's understand who those people actually are. Because if you actually are taking that step, text and extrapolating from it that this has nothing to do with you, this has to do with some other people that's in Disney Israel right now, you have no connection with it, then you can continue to keep propagating this issue that it can be done away with. We got a new set of laws that we can deal with because that's talk the old Testament. I'm going to use the vernacular. We don't use those terms here, but I'm using it in the vernacular in the, in, in, in the old covenant, you know, that's for the Jews. That's for the Ashkenazis. That's not talking about us. And that is where a lot of this stuff breaks down because these people this is the egregious part. This is the part that gets me upset. You took your butt to that seminary for X amount of years. And I got to believe that they told you this when you were there. And you systematically came out and said, you know what? I get it. I had to get it because I had to take a test to matriculate out. But I'm still going to preach this narrative that's incorrect. At least do the people a favor and do them some justice and give them life and death. Give them the red pill and the blue pill. Say, this is the Hebrew text and this is what it says and these are the people that it's talking about. This is the Christian document over here and this is the people that it's talking about. You choose for yourself. Now, if Hebrew Israel is instilled in you, you already know what you're going to gravitate to. You're going to gravitate to the most high, period, in the story. But I mean, it's, it's a series of things that because of our culture, the idioms, the dogmas that we have here in the United States, this Babylonian captivity, if I can draw a parallel, that we are in under Nebuchadnezzar, that keeps us in bondage. And until what? We cry out as a people, we're going to stay here. I am tired, sick and tired of having to deal with the aspect of still being enslaved. Mm. And our people are still enslaved because you won't come out from amongst them and be separate. I just, I, 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 I have to go back I have to I have to continue to go back to the opening the opening narrative. I have to keep going I have to keep going back to this. One more time. I have to keep going let's, back to it. Let's do it one more time. 
I, that I, was good. I have to keep saying to you that the Most High, you are a people set apart as holy for Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Yahweh has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his own unique treasure, his own unique treasure, not somebody else's own unique treasure, his own unique treasure. Mm. He did this because he loved you and wanted you and he wanted to keep the oath which he swore to your ancestors, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, Abraham, mm. Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. So, so, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. How are you mm. going to continue to listen to somebody tell you that the one who chose you and loved you and gave you something as royal. Remember, you are a royal people. You're you're holy and you're royal. You're supposed to be holy and royal. And he's given you something that's precious, such as his covenant, his mm -hmm. grace, his mitzvot, his rulings that make you wise, give you understanding that's true. Mm. that's going to be in play when we get out of this sixth day. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Mm. I cannot wait to get out of this day. I can't wait to get out of this day wow. and get into the seventh day because I want to see the look on all your faces if you make it. Right. I want to see the look on all your faces when you find out that you spent your whole life living under the auspices of a lie that wasn't even germane to you. Mm. The sense of loss. Yeah. That you uh, and, 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 and here's the deal. Yes, it's not great for us in this exile, but that's our, that's our fault. Mm. That's not the most high's fault. That's our fault. Mm. Yes, we are oppressed, but that's because of what our ancestors did. Mm. But yet and still, we can have peace of mind, peace of soul and spirit, leave the conscious, leave the sin consciousness behind, walk in a consciousness of glory and expectation and look forward to being redeemed back to our land, having our third temple rebuilt as Ezekiel talks about in his, in his writing, and so do the prophets talk about the rebuilding of the third temple in the Messianic era. Mm -hmm. living in a state where the nations that are oppressing us, if they even raise an eyebrow to think about it, the Most High said, I will cause your eye sockets to drop and to melt in your head and you will drop dead right where you are. We no longer, we will no longer have to be oppressed by the enemy and our king our king, our righteous king, the most high, under our most high, influencing our king, King David, who he said would be a king forever, mm -hmm. going to war and disposing of all of our enemies and we would live in peace forever. Mm. But while we're in this exile, we can experience some of that glory just by being obedient to what the Most High says and stop listening to people calling the God that you serve that spoke 
between Genesis and Second Chronicles to the prophets and to Moshe calling them and him a liar. Liar, yeah. And when somebody tells you that you don't have to do what the Most High said that you have to, that you should do, that is calling the Most High a liar. And I tell you what, you can call me, you can email me, we can meet face to face, Mm -hmm. And I will tell you the same thing because I am not afraid to stand in the face of any man who opposes what the Most High has said and tell you you're lying on the Most High. That's not what he said. And he hasn't changed. Correct. And his word is for Hebrew Israel and the foreigner who joins with Hebrew Israel. Mm -hmm. It ain't for nobody else. Right. And you can stand on that because that's not your own words. That's coming straight out of scripture. Yes. That's not you talking. So, so if you want to do that, what the na- if you want to follow the ways of the nations, which the Most High said, I told you not to do, mm-hmm. if you want to follow their narrative, you want to follow their religion, that's fine. That's fine. My job is to help my people. I'm like Daniel. What about my people? Mm -hmm. My people are destroyed for the want and the lack Lack of of knowledge knowledge, and they don't seek it. Yeah, that's key. They don't seek it. And out of the myriad, myriad thousands of individuals that are Hebrew in, 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 in who they are, and you may not know that you are, the most I still only going to bring a remnant back to the seventh day. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But here's my point tonight. My point tonight is to say that for those of you who listen to Hebrews in exile, the task before me is to help you to get out of the quagmire of foolishness and heresy. And just like the Most High, My task is to help you get back to where your soul and your spirit can thrive in truth. Mm. Because the most highest word is true and is truth. You don't have to spiritualize it. You don't have to, you don't have to, 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 to make it fit, make, make it fit in square and square and, and round holes. It speaks for itself. The Most High has said what he said, and I, Rabbi Robert B. Holman Jr., echo the words of my creator, my king, my savior, my redeemer, as is written in the book of Yeshayahu, Isaiah, Mm -hmm. who said, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no other. I echo his words, not only this day, But as long as I'm breathing and I have soundness of mind, I will continue to rally the cry and blow the shofar in Zion Mm -hmm. and ask our people to come out from amongst them and turn back to the most high. I want to, if I may, just conclude on this note here on my behalf. On our behalf, because it's, it's as you read that opening, it resonated with me so much that I can remember a poem that Marianne Williamson had wrote. And I'm going to read it real quick. And I think it's, it's, it's right in line with what you're talking about. We're talking about the opulence of Hebrew Israel. We're talking about the omniscience, the, 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 the ostentatiousness. I should say omniscience, but the ostentatiousness of Hebrew Israel. To understand that you're royalty, that you you have so much that you're possessing, but why aren't you stepping into that? This is what resonated with me. Let me read this poem real quick. Hebrew Israel, what is your greatest fear? Now, I've had that Hebrew Israel in the front. But what is your greatest fear? Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is the it is our light, not darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I? 
to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous. Actually, who are you to be? Are you a child of Yahweh? Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightening about shrinking so other people won't feel insecure around you. We are born to make manifest the glory of Yahweh that is within us. It's not just some of some of us. It's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. There's a poem by Marianne Wilson. I think it's very poignant for Hebrew Israel to understand that this trepidation that we have about ourselves, once we release it, and come out from among all this ideology and step into the marvelous light of the Most High, there is so much wealth to be gained. I know, I know that the words that we have shared tonight are very hard words, and for some of you, you're trying to figure out well. How do I do this? I, 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 want, I want to make that step. I want, I, want, I want to get started. I want to do this. And I know, I know there's something else or something different. Well, um, we're going to talk about that in our next podcast. Until then, this is Rabbi Robert B. Holman Jr. And Sean Appleton. And this has been Hebrews, Hebrews in, in Exile. exile. Shalom. Shalom.